Turn your King James Bible to the book of Job, chapter 38. I want to talk to you today about when God speaks through tornadoes. Of course, the word tornado is a modern word. The biblical word is whirlwind. But uh, there's some very interesting things here about whirlwinds and about what we're seeing right now here in America. There have been, I've lost track of how many tornadoes, whirlwinds, have hit um, in the Midwest and you hear down in Texas, Missouri, Arkansas, all these different places where these tornadoes are hitting. And um, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about this subject that it is in fact a system of God's judgment. But God actually speaks to Job out of a whirlwind. There's a whirlwind there spinning on the ground. Job sees this coming towards him and then he hears God speak out of it. Hmm, that would leave an impression. <laughs> but let's read here, Job chapter 38, verses 1 through 3. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Um, sometimes you have to be a man and stand before God and see what God's trying to say to you. And let me just say this before we even get into this study. If you have lost your home, or you know somebody that's lost their home because of a whirlwind, because of a tornado, they've suffered loss, you need to be a man and you need to deal with God about this thing not your insurance company, okay? Your insurance company is not God. I know a lot of people feel that way here in America where my insurance protects me and everything. My insurance provides for me if I'm sick. My insurance provides for me if I lose something or have a fire or an accident or whatever else. But when that's just a cover up for what you really need to be doing and that is you need to get yourself, your life right with God. And if God destroys something of yours, you need to examine yourself. You need to look, you need to say, Hmm, maybe God's trying to get my attention here. I mean, I'm saved, I'm born again, I'm a preacher. I've uh, been serving the, the Lord since 2007, full-time ministry. And I'll tell you what, bad things happen. The first thing I try to do is say, okay, God, what am I doing wrong? Are you trying to chasten me? Are you scourging me for some kind of a reason here? Or is this just part of me, you know, you're directing me in a different direction and you're getting me to stop doing what I'm doing I didn't do anything wrong per se, but you're trying to steer me in a different direction. That's another possibility. But uh, there have been times I've sinned and I've been messing around in sin and God has to kind of crack the whip a little bit on me. And that's what Job was doing here. Job was a perfect man, upright and the whole thing, great man. But he was starting to have some doubts and some questions about God. He was starting to get a little bit out of line of what he was saying about the Lord. And the Lord had to come to him in a whirlwind and say, Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. God starts to put some questions to Job. And that's a good thing when God does that in your life. Go next to Psalm 58. We're going to see what the Bible has to say about this now. Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, you have to examine yourself. You don't just, you know, the book, the Bible is like a, a man beholding his face in a glass. It talks about in the New Testament. You're supposed to look at the Bible and look and see what it says about you. You. I have to do it with me. Judge yourself. If we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, the Bible teaches. See, God won't judge you if you're judging yourself according to the standards of his word. You get away from the book, then God has to kind of give you a couple of good whacks and bring you back. Psalm 58, beginning in verse 1. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as waters, which run continually, when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows. Let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots, before your pots, can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a 
whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. It's amazing. You see the videos of the these places that have just been taken away. And it's just, you can't even tell there was a house there anymore. Yet, and then you see another place and there's, the house was on the foundation over here and it just got moved over this way. It's over in the field now. Just taken right off its foundation and set down over there. God can do things in judgment. Verse 10. The righteous shall, shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. How do you look at these tornadoes and all this other bad stuff? And you know, a lot of the people there, it's, unless it's God chastening one of his children, they're all wicked. They're all lost people. People sitting down watching the big screen TVs and laughing at people using God's name in vain. Do you rejoice when you see it? I do. I enjoy seeing that stuff. I like to see people, you know, repent. I like to see people turn from their sin. Um, that's very much needed in this nation. But we're so quick to say, oh, that's terrible. Oh, the, the tragedy. Oh, that's such a bad thing. All my prayers go out to you. Um, you're not supposed to do that. You're not. Oh, but if we would take stands and say, God's judging this nation, well, then we might be ostracized and we might be looked down upon and being, you know, be called judgmental. Oh, we wouldn't want that now, would we? Proverbs chapter 1. Go to Proverbs chapter 1 next. It gets right down to it. You either believe the Bible or you don't. And if you believe the Bible, then there are times that God is very strict. There are times that God is very harsh. But it's only because people have rejected Him and turned against Him and they hate His Word. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning in verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief, chief place... She crieth in the chief place of uh, concourse. In the openings of the gates in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. You know, I wonder how many people sat down after the tornado went by and their houses wrecked and everything. I wonder how many of them looked for the rubble, through the rubble and got a King James Bible out and sat down and started reading it or fell down on their knees and just said, God, I'm sorry for all the sinful things I've done. I deserve what happened to this house. God, it's amazing you even left my worthless hide alive and you should have killed me in that thing. And Lord, thank you for you know saving me from, the, from death here. And you know what, Lord? I want to live for you now. God, please save me. I believe what I've heard over the years that you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I didn't, I didn't think about it until now. And I, it took me losing everything here. Now I'm ready to be saved. I wonder how many people did that. I wonder how many people turned at his reproof. Uh, Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. See, a lot of people that lost their homes and had it all go bad and everything, they don't, they don't understand what the words of God say against them. This study is going to seem like a hate speech to them. It's not hate speech. All right? I am glad that I was judged by God at some point in time. I am glad that God started to hit me a little bit and kick me around and say, okay, you need to be saved. You need to repent. And don't tell me, oh, lost people, they can't repent. They don't have any understanding. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. There's a lot of lost people. They can live very clean, very uh, seemingly godly and righteous lives. Uh, yeah, they understand. God's given everyone a conscience. And I'm not saying you have to clean up your life first and then get saved. Okay, that's lordship salvation. I've never taught that. Again, a lot of people lie about me. They'll say, oh, Denlinger teaches lordship, lordship salvation. Well, define it from the scriptures. They don't. Um, but they'll just, they make it whatever they want. True lordship salvation is the, a Calvinistic thing uh, it's part of Calvinism that God's, you know, unconditional election and he's drawing you to himself and he basically cleans up all of your life and then he grants you repentance at that point in time. That's where that whole teaching comes from. 
Verse 24, Because I have called, and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity, I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as destruction, as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they that hated, for that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel, and they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Hmm. Oh, you know, all these people, they're screaming and crying and all the bad stuff happening and whatever. And there's a lot more bad stuff coming this year, too, by the way. I'll be talking about that here in a little bit. But all these people doing that. Where am I at? Uh, but whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. These people down there, they're, they're hiding in their basements and they can hear the... <laughs> coming and they can hear the, their house just ripping apart. And they're down there like this and they see the floor ripping off above their heads and things are hitting them and they're, getting, and they're screaming. Ah! I'm in my place on my property. <laughs> Quiet from fear of evil. I'm not worried about it. Um, show you a thing here. Uh, NOAA predicts above normal 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Uh, the season begins on the 1st of June, goes through November 30th of this year. And they say that there's an 85% chance of an above normal season. Hurricanes. Uh, they're even worse than tornadoes. How many tornadoes do we have? I, I have no idea what we're up to number-wise right now. They're happening, happening almost every day. We have wildfires out in California. We have flooding all over the place. Down in southern Maine, they have flooding. The oceans are coming up and you know, flooding communities and things and wiping out houses and all this other stuff and all this damage and everything. Yeah. And you know what? It's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. And I'll tell you right now, give you a little prediction. Um <clears throat> Why is the Lord doing this? Why is the Lord allowing these horrible things to happen? Um, well, He, the Bible talks about, is there evil in a city and the Lord hath not done it? The Lord's bringing evil upon this nation because they've turned against Him and turned against His Word. That's why. And I will rejoice in that. I'm not going to be sorrowful and, oh no, please, God, stop the, the suffering and whatever. I pray for it. I really do. Because that's the only chance that people have to come back. Turn you at my reproof. You know? Oh, repentance means going from unbelief to belief. That is one of the dumbest satanic lies that Jack Hiles ever came up with and all of his little followers came up with because they're trying to fill pews, you see? So you can't really tell the truth about it. Repentance means a change of life that leads to a changed, or a change of mind, excuse me, that leads to a changed life. That would, that's what it means. Unbelief to belief. No, that's nonsense. All right, this thing of unbelief and, and whatever else. I, uh, whole studies on that. I can't go off on a big tangent right now on that. But the whole point is, turn you at my reproof. Turning when God reproves. You just had your whole house wiped out. And there's no insurance. The little God thing of insurance there. Don't worry, my insurance policies will protect me. Well, you know what? That's going to go away. There's a little word of prophecy for you. Um, the insurance scam is going to go away. I'm going to show you a little video clip here where... Uh, one of the tornado things out there in Iowa, they got the governor of Iowa, this chickie walking around, and there's a woman from FEMA, and she says, we're going to run out of money, probably by August, maybe sooner. Listen to this. But well, we are facing another year where we're going to um, run out of our disaster relief fund. Um, right now, it's looking like it's going to be in about the August time frame, um, but we are seeing an increase in, in the number of disasters that we're supporting. How about that? Isn't that nice? And, you know, this town here, we get the town meeting thing, you know, the town report or whatever. Uh, we got one and we were reading it. And they had, uh, we had some trees come down. And um, I think they had to cut up 50 trees or something like this. And they said that they're going to try to get FEMA to help pay for this and whatever. And I'm thinking, trees coming down? 
That's an emergency, federal emergency management agency. Come help us, please. This town here is a welfare town. I'll just tell you that right now. The town of Patton in Northern Maine is a welfare town. Always looking for government grants, always looking for handouts for the government. We need this, we need that. Could you please do this? Could you please do that? They want to make a $3 million uh, library or something down the road, community center. And what that means, just to you know, kind of get translate the liberal, you know, socialistic devil speak, when they say community center, what they're really meaning is they want to put pedophile books into these places and have transgendered perverts come and screw up the next generation of children to normalize it, to groom these children into thinking that it's normal to have an adult trying to put their hands on you sexually. That's what it's all about. That's what the libraries have turned into. They're no longer centers of learning. It's centers of mind control. And they want to do it and they actually got uh, Susan Collins or something, state representative or senator or something, and she's, I uh, guess, voted. The one day there's right across from where our office is, the Veterans Memorial Library, right over here, and they have the Veterans Friends of Veterans Memorial Library. And all these vehicles showed up, and they're doing some kind of thing, and this big photo op thing out front there, and I was thinking, I have no idea what this is about. And we found out, yeah, they're trying to build some kind of big community center down the, the road there. Mess up children. Disgusting. And God's going to put up with this? God's just okay with this. No, he's not. No, he isn't. But you see, here's the whole point. The insurance, and I'll be showing quotes on this stuff in the future, but insurance in this nation, it's the God of the finance world. Okay, because it protects, it's always there for you and everything else. But the problem is a lot of people are dropping insurance coverage because insurance is going up all the time. And there are people saying, hey, wait a second here. I can't afford all this, these different types of insurance. I'm just going to have to rely on myself. And if they're saved, I'll rely on the Lord to protect me and instead of some insurance policy. And so the insurance only works if there's enough money coming in. You see, it's a big financial scam is what it is. And they're coming out with all this different wording and things. And if, if we say that there's something that could happen, then if that happens, then we can't cover you. Again, I did a video years ago about this whole thing that they were literally, my father had insurance. This was back before I got married. My father got this thing from his insurance company saying, if there are riots and looting and civil disturbances and terrorist attacks and whatever, we can't cover you for that. Huh. Interesting. What are you expecting? What do you know is coming here? Yeah, that's exactly the problem. But the insurance industry is failing. And what the Lord's going to do is the Lord's just going to keep hammering this nation. His hand is stretched out still, talks about there. And he says, here's my counsel. Turn. Turn from your wickedness. Hey, stop with the little rainbow parades. Don't you understand the rainbow is a sign of judgment? God put the rainbow in the clouds to show how he destroyed the earth by water, by flooding in the days of Noah. And now they, these perverts come out and they're saying, look at our rainbow flags. Look at this. Look. They're flaunting their sin in God's face. You know, they, they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not, the Bible talks about. <laughs> and God's just going to, you know, I'll just look the other way. No, God's going to destroy this nation through his means of natural disasters, acts of God, and then the insurance companies will go bankrupt. And once the insurance companies go bankrupt, the whole system will fall apart, I will promise you. Because without insurance, what good is a mortgage? What good is money lending and the fiat currency and the Federal Reserve and all the other the banking? and the, What good is it if there's no insurance to back it up? The FDIC had to be bailed out last year because of the bank failures. A lot of the bankers are saying that there's going to be even more bank failures right now. People are pulling their money out of the banks. You're very wise to do that. Um, FDIC. Hey, we'll, we'll insure your deposits up to $200,000 or something like this or whatever else. They have 1%. They did last year. I don't know what it is now. They can cover 1% of depositors' money in this nation. The, the whole thing of the FDIC, you know, guys meeting and then things, executives, and they're saying, you know, there's going to be a major financial crisis and we won't be able to cover all the things. But don't, don't tell the average person about it. They don't watch us anyhow. They're too dumb, you know, distracted on their sports and distracted on all the other things out there. And I'm trying to warn you. See, 
I want I don't want my viewers to get messed up. I don't want you to lose everything like they did in the 1929 stock market crash that was well known about and planned out. I don't want your health to be bad. I don't want you to go through horrible times. See, God will reprove you. God will correct you through preachers, through his word. Real preachers, anyhow, not the, the fake ones that are, oh, let's have our Sunday celebration and everything's wonderful. They aren't real ones. We'll talk about that here in a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. Get a little bit excited about God's word sometime. Sometimes. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's go there next. Isaiah 40. Beginning in verse 12. Read another thing about a uh, whirlwind here. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 12. Let's begin, in, begin there. Um, Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and meted out heaven with the span and comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance? That's how big the universe is. There. The heavens, excuse me, the heavens. From that finger to this finger over here. The span of his hand. God looks down at the heavens and he says, that's about that big. Just like that. There to there. Do you know him? you have a personal relationship with God? Then don't worry about anything else. Verse 13. Who hath directed the spirit of the Lord, or, be, or being his counselor, hath taught him? With whom took he counsel, and who instructed him, and taught him in the path of judgment, and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket, and are counted as the small dust of the balance. Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn, nor the beasts thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. To whom then will ye liken God, or what likeness will ye compare unto him? The workman melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth it over the, with gold, and casteth silver chains. He that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Compare that, by the way, to what goes on over there in the book of Jeremiah. People say it's the Christmas tree thing. No, it's the work of a workman with an axe. He carves an, an idol and he decks it with gold. Just had to put that in there. Verse 21. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in, that bringeth the princes to nothing, he maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he shall also blow upon them, hmm, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Huh, almost like God's causing the whirlwind. Yeah. Verse 25, To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal? saith the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. Um, God's in control, in other words. If you want to sum up what we just read there, everything we just read, God's in control, even of the whirlwind. Well, no, it's a, it's a hot and a cold front that comes together and it creates this sort of a spinning motion and that's what, and it goes down and, and things and then the, the jet stream is what kind of steers it. When it uh, that's your understanding of it. But the reality of it is the Bible says that God controls it. Isaiah 41, and I'll believe the Bible before I'll believe atheists. Isaiah 41, verse 15 and 16. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains, and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt fan them, and the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. You see it there again. 
Here it is again. The whirlwind shall scatter them. Look at the videos out there. I'll put one up here for you. Look at the video of the what's been scattered. The whirlwind scatters them. Just debris everywhere. Just all over the place. And thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shalt glory in the Holy One of Israel. Do you rejoice when you see that kind of footage? Do you look at that and just say, praise the Lord, I'm glad he punished those sinners. Maybe they'll repent. Maybe some of them will have enough brains to say, the Lord just reproved me. The Lord just punished me for my sin. Maybe I should stop watching that filthy garbage on television. Maybe I should stop with my profanity. Maybe I shouldn't use God's name in vain. Maybe I shouldn't do the drugs. Maybe I shouldn't get drunk. Maybe I shouldn't cheat on my wife. Maybe I shouldn't be abusive towards my children. Maybe God's trying to get my attention. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Or I guess we should just have this wonderful little time down here on the earth where nobody gets punished by God. God doesn't ever reprove the heathen. I don't think so. Isaiah 66 Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 and 16. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword uh, will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. Wait a second. I, it couldn't have been right. Let me go back and read that verse 16 again. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead Plead with all flesh. Huh. The Lord bled on the cross. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from all sin. He you know, went there to bleed. Why? So that he can plead with all flesh. The pleading is he's saying, Hey, wake up! Wake up! I'm trying to get your attention! I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Let me get your attention. Stop watching this satanic stuff out there. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Satan is blinding you. He's got you sitting down in front of your tele television there, telling you a vision of how the world is not, you know, not the reality of this world. I'm trying to get your attention. Let me shut the TV off. Oh, blink, 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 tell power ups. Let's get the TV back on. Why don't we get the generator going? And Lord says, okay, that's not going to do it. I'm going to have to do something very extreme to try to get your attention. He's pleading with people. Why would a loving God send people to hell? Well, you know, I can prove, I don't, I don't have to believe in the Bible because I can prove that a loving God wouldn't, you know, send people to hell. He's pleading I'm sending the whirlwind to destroy your belongings and just scatter them and say it doesn't matter. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Boom! He smashes the house and scatters everything around him. And he says, please, please, turn at my reproof. Listen to me. I'm trying to get your attention. I don't want you going to hell. I guess you don't dial anymore, you know. Oh, yeah, hello, Allstate. Yeah, I lost my home in a tornado. Oh, all the FEMA people are on the way. Oh, good. Oh, oh we're going to have a community get-together, and the churches, local churches are coming out, and they're going to tell us that, that God loves us and everything. So there was a church in uh, uh, Pennsylvania down near Pittsburgh and whatever, and it, God just went... Whoosh! And knocked off the steeple, threw it out into the parking lot, you know, and smashed a couple cars with it, you know. And they're just going, they come out and they didn't say, man, we shouldn't have this church building. There are no church buildings in the New Testament. What are we doing with a steeple and everything? What's a pagan bunch of, no. Oh, we're just so thankful. God showed us his love and his mercy. God protected all of us. You stupid fools. God's pleading with you. He's saying, please turn from your wicked pagan ways. 
up there doing worship music, you know. Pastor's wife, I'm doing worship music. I'm on the worship team. Yeah, you're going to end up in hell. Unless you turn from your wickedness. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 11 through 14. At that time shall it be said to this people and to Jerusalem, A dry wind of the high places in the wilderness toward the daughter of my people, not to fan nor to cleanse. Even a full wind from those places shall come unto me. Now also will I give sentence against them. Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. There it is again. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. I mean, what's going to happen in America when the insurance companies and FEMA and all the others, there's no money. And your house is wiped out. Hurricane, tornado, whatever the case might be. And you're just looking out there. And I have no money. What am I going to do? Probably turn to the Lord. That might be a good idea. Good thing to, kind of smart thing to do there. Verse 14. Uh, o Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Had to include that one in there for the uh, papal Juden out there, and the Jews as well. Um, papal Juden, the Jews that serve the Pope, uh, those that are mingled in things and whatever. And then you have the actual Jews. And, oh, Jesus, yeah, no, I don't agree. You know, Isaiah 53 is about Israel. It's not about a man named Jesus. And Jesus, you know, he's not our Messiah. Uh, what are you doing? Well, you know, right now I'm invested in some stocks and, you know, we're into banking and we're going to move a lot of merchandise back and forth here across the sea. And we're going to be coming in and making it a community here. You know, you need to get our Yehudish kite up here. So uh, that just means basically Jewishness in a, in a community. So they feel comfortable there and we'll build synagogues and we'll do it. Uh, you better turn. Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness. Love of money is the root of all evil. That thou mayest be saved. You're never going to come to Jesus Christ if you don't have any conviction of your sin. You never will. Why well, had a Jesus, Jesus shaped hole in my heart and I came to Jesus and I said, Jesus, could you move into my heart because I'd just like to have a better life now. Oh, that's not Christianity. It just isn't. Jeremiah 23 You can call me Lordship Salvationist. You can call me Work Salvationist. You can call me whatever you want. But you know what? Someday all of my enemies, every single one, will remember my words. And they'll think back and think, I sure wish I would listen listened to Brian Dellinger. I mean, all sin is negative. <laughs> okay? Uh, even if you'd say this is a false gospel I'm teaching, you know, turn from your sin and things. Come to the Lord and, and you know, understand that you're turning against your sin. It's not that you're cleaning up everything. I understand that. You know, I, I have to explain little things, you know, and, and try to make it elementary or something because too many people out there just twist my words and whatever. Um, I'm not saying you can live a sinless life and then God will save you because you're doing so well. That's not what I'm saying. Okay, that's work salvation. That's not what I teach. Right? Again, understand that. I'm saying, you look at your life, you say, I'm a miserable wreck God's speaking to me. This whirlwind came. He just shattered my whole life. Everything's just messed up. My relationships are bad. My job is bad. Where I'm living is bad. My health is bad. My money situation is bad. Everything's just in chaos. And I say, you're trying to get my attention, God, aren't you? God, please save me. I need your help. That's what I'm saying. It's a beautiful thing. But people, the perverts, come along and just tw twist what I say. So, Jeremiah 23, beginning in verse 15. I mean, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. It's just that simple. Um, verse 15. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, The Lord hath said, Ye shall have peace. <laughs> and they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. 
we're heading into good times. This is the strongest economy ever. Everything's wonderful. As soon as we get Donald Trump in as our president, then everything's going to turn great and everything's just wonderful. They're lying to you. Verse 18, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Go through the book of Jeremiah someday and compare it to America especially, but even your own nation if you're from another country out there. Just look at the way God destroys nations. And you can see it and you think, wow, you know, mark his word. I'm not saying you have to do that like I do with the you know, highlighting and things, but you know, mark it down and say, man, that verse right there. I mean, I carry this little notebook here in the back of, in my back pocket all the time. And I've, I have to write down notes or whatever else. And this is what I have in the back of it here. I wrote that out by hand. Psalm, uh, what is that? Psalm 9 verses 19 through 20. What is that? I'm marking God's word. Right there, you can read it or look it up your, on your own. I mark God's word. I want to live by God's word. Okay, where are we at here? Um, verse 19. <clears throat> Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Praise the Lord. That's wonderful. I'm glad to hear it. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. <laughs> uh, we're in the latter days. We're considering what's written right here perfectly. We can see it. I can show you video after video, picture after picture, and you can say, it's lined up exactly with God's word. We're considering it perfectly. The prophets that are out there, these ministers of Satan, they appear as the ministers of righteousness, and they're saying, it's a good time, your best life now, you know, Joel Osteen and all this other stuff. You can say, you're a bunch of liars. You're false prophets. And you know something else? It isn't just the preachers, okay? It's also people like David Ramsey and devils like that that are saying the housing market is just going to continue to go up. Uh, the financial system's great in this country. You know, all this stuff. That's a, a false prophecy is what they're giving. Verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You see, that's the mark of a real ministry. A real ministry will turn people to the book. A real minister of God is not afraid to hold a Bible in his hands. And a real man of God will say, okay, I have the King James Bible. You need to have a King James Bible. Pick it up and read it for yourself. Go get one. There's nothing more important than this book in your life. I will turn you to this book. That is the hallmark of this ministry. That's why it is not Brian Denlinger Ministries Incorporated. It's not Brian Denlinger University or something. No, it's King James Video Ministries. The King James Bible is my standard, and I want it to be your standard. Last thing I want is a bunch of idiots walking around calling themselves Denlingerites. You ever do it? If I see, I'll probably knock you down, try to knock some sense into you or something. Smack you around a little bit or whatever else. Don't you call, call yourself a Denlinger, right? I'm of Denlinger or something. Shut up. Don't do that. King James Bible believer. That's the only thing that you should be calling yourself. And when I'm wrong, that you say Denlinger's wrong and the book is right. Oh, but I love you, Brother Brian. I just don't want to say you're wrong. You better think I'm wrong sometimes. You better turn against me. It's the book. The book is the authority. And a real man of God, a real ministry out there, they'll turn you to this book. Go to Jeremiah 25. You know, I could, I could preach in a way I'd get a lot of donations. I could grow this ministry. I could tell people what they want to hear, not be sarcastic, you know, and trim my beard or have a little smooth face or something, wear a shirt and tie and all the whole, you know. I could do a lot of things to deceive people and get their money. But I don't do that. 
I just come out very caustic and because I want you to understand I'm telling you the truth. I'm a desperate man. I have a very short time in terms of this life. Even if I live to be 100 years old, I'm almost halfway there. Okay, I'm going to be 49 years old here uh, July 7th of this year. Um, I'm almost halfway done. If, if the Lord would give me 100 years, I don't think he's going to. Um, I don't think we're going to be around that long on the earth. But, you know, if he gave me 100 years, I'm halfway done, essentially, with what I could you know, do with the strength and everything that I have. I don't have much longer to go. So as a desperate man, I'm not going to fool around with little nice little talks. So I'm worried about offending you and I want to make sure that you get, you know, 10% of your income is coming to me. I don't preach that way. I thank God for those who support this ministry. But if you don't support this ministry, okay, whatever. That's between you and God. But I'm not going to deceive you and lie to you. I find that detestable. There's times I've made mistakes, but it wasn't because I was trying to deceive people. Sometimes I'm a real idiot, okay, and I say the wrong things. Have enough grace for me to understand that. Jeremiah chapter 30, back to the study here. Oh, wait, did I go to Jeremiah chapter 25? I'm sorry, I moved my paper. Verse 30 through 33. Next thing here about the whirlwind. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout, as they that tread the grapes, against all the inhabitants, inhabitants of the earth. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord hath a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh. Again, understand God's love there. Yeah, he's mad. Yes, he's, he's reproving and he's rebuking, but he's pleading. He's trying to get people to turn to him. And he will give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. The sword, one of God's instruments of death. The sword, fighting, killing. Verse 32. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. A great whirlwind. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. I think it's a reference to the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, the people of God there, the being the Jewish people. I believe that that's what's going on. It's written to the Jews in the Old Testament, so why wouldn't it be? But um, what an attitude. What a thing there. What God's going to do. I rejoice. And you understand what all the Jews right now are doing? Um, they deserve the time of Jacob's trouble. It's coming. If you're a Jew out there, you better get uh, saved very quickly. Because if you go into that time period, there's a pretty good chance you're going to be dead. Um, and again, I'm saying this to plead with you. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 23 through 24. Behold, the whirlwind of the Lord goeth forth with fury, a continuing whirlwind. It shall fall with pain upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord shall not return until he have done it and until he have performed the intents of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it. Very similar to what we read earlier. In the latter days, what does that mean? It means it's going to get worse with time. The whirlwind of the Lord. Hmm. Nahum chapter 1. Minor prophets, you go back past the book of Daniel. Keep going back towards the New Testament. This is not one of the places I'm real ultra familiar with. <laughs> Just to let you know. Um, I remember being a boy and they'd have us, you know, we'd recite. You go to Micah and then to Nahum, by the way. But they'd have us, you know, recite the books of the Bible. And man, I'd get into the minor prophets and I'd just, ugh. Habakkuk, Zechariah, Haggai, um, uh, you know, and just stumble all over the thing. And I still struggle with it, you know, all these years later. You know, 40 years later, I'm still struggling with it. 
Um, so be encouraged if you're, you know, having to pause the video and look it up in the table of contents tense and where's Nahum at, you know. Uh, Nahum chapter 1 verses 2 through 4. God is jealous and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea and maketh it dry and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth and Carmel and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. Hmm. He rebuketh the sea, and the wind is controlled by him. What's the thing there? God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. In context, who are we talking about again? Uh, that would be God. Okay, let's go to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark 4, verse 35 through 41. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And as he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he saith unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? What did we read in Nahum? That the Lord, God, controls the wind and the sea. He can rebuke the sea, and the sea is calm. What did Jesus just do? He rebuked the wind and the sea. Is Jesus Christ God? Yes. Obviously, Jesus Christ is God. I still get in the comments, people, you know, you, you can't prove that Jesus is God. Oh, I can very easily prove it. I've proved it all through my preaching. You're just not spending the time to listen. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Again, if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. But you see, the Lord is sending these storms, the whirlwinds, the hurricanes that are going to come this summer. And I can promise you they're going to be very horrible. They're going to be very bad. And you watch what happens when the insurance companies can't pay out and FEMA can't pay out. And the people realize they've lost everything. I hope that they understand that it's God pleading with them. Please, turn from your wicked ways. I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I died on the cross to pay for your sins. Don't you know the love that I've had towards you? Please, please, you come, come to me. Turn to me. I'm punishing you, but you need to listen. Please come. Accept me. Believe my word. Trust my word. Job chapter 40. Let's go there. That'll be where we'll end the study. Back to the book of Job. Job chapter 40, verse 1 through 9. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with, with, contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further.
Then answered the Lord, then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Hast thou an arm like God, or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? Are you going to condemn God this year? Dear viewer, saved or lost? Are you going to uh, join in with the lost world out there, Christian? And say, oh, it's such a shame. Oh, we're praying for you. We're, we're real concerned. Or are you going to say, you know what? God is righteous. God's judgment has fallen upon the people of this nation. I pray that they turn. I pray that they repent. What if it happens in your community? What are you going to say to your neighbor? Why would God do this? Maybe he's trying to get your attention. Do you know God? How much time do you spend reading his word? How could you judge me? I just lost everything. Don't you understand? Uh. I'm trying to get you to turn to the Lord. Can I show you some scriptures? Send them this study. <laughs> um, write these scriptures down. Here you go. Here's a King James Bible. And I have some scriptures for you. I wrote the scriptures out by hand. I want you to look these up and I want you to prayerfully consider them. Here's a Bible. There's the solution. God's trying to get your attention, friend. But unfortunately, a lot of you are going to condemn God. Um, I don't think it's right that this should have happened. I don't understand why God would have done a thing like that. I, don't, I just don't understand it. Pretty sad. Don't laugh when you see the wicked being judged or anything. You shouldn't do that. But you should look and you should fall down on your knees and say, Thank you, Lord. There is a God in heaven that judges. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? He did. There's evil in the city. There's evil out here going on. It's because these people have turned against God. And God, still in His love and mercy, He still is pleading with these people. What's it going to take for God to get your attention? Are you going to be foolish? How much time are you going to spend being entertained on YouTube? Just walking around through this earth and looking for happiness here and looking for happiness there and Maybe I'll try this drug. Maybe I'll try that alcohol. Maybe I'll try this woman. Maybe I'll try this movie. Maybe I'll try this vacation. Maybe I'll try that video game. Whatever. Um, God is going to start doing some major things. It's already begun. And uh, that report that I showed you from NOAA, possibility of what was it again? 17 to 25 total hurricanes this year. Their predictions. Um, is it going to take God wiping you out completely? Where you're like Job, sitting on the ground, and you've got sores and around you is the destruction of your home. Pieces laying here and there. There's your vehicle over there, flipped upside down, windows smashed out all the things that you've collected over the years strewn around you and the rain is coming down on your face and running down. What's going to be your response? God, I deserve this. I'm vile. Like Job said. Or will it be? I hate you, God. Why would you do this? I'll never put my faith in you. Guarantee you that's a lot of people. That's what they'll be doing. They're earning their damnation because they don't understand what God just did for them. Make sure your attitude lines up with Scripture, brethren. Won't make you popular. I'm never going to be a popular preacher. 
because I stand by this book and you know it. If you've been watching me, you know that uh, I try to stand by the Bible. Whatever you want to say about me. That will be it for this study. I have another one to do here in another video, so I'm not going to ramble and ramble on because I can't say anything more than I've already said. <laughs> um, if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. That's just the way it is. So uh, hopefully that this is this has been a challenge to you. You know, it's so easy to get caught up in this stuff. You know, you uh, see this stuff. I mean, my in-laws are out in Iowa, and I, I care about them. You know, I'm I'm concerned for them. We pray for them and everything. And uh, they don't know the Lord personally. And and um, but you know, I I hear about these hurricane or, or not hurricanes, the tornadoes, and it's hitting in, in the Midwest and Iowa and Nebraska, and I think. Whoa, okay, my relatives are over there in the you know western part of Iowa, down near um, Omaha, Nebraska, not far from the border there. And I'm you know watching and okay, is it hitting their area? Is it okay? There's one. I remember hearing that term. My wife would tell me about that. She used to play. You know, she'd go with her school to that town there, and they'd have the running matches and whatever. That my wife used to be in cross country. You know, and. Uh, I remember hearing that term, you know, she had relatives that lived in that area and this area, and, and I'm hearing all these, you know, towns in Iowa and things, and I'm thinking, you know, I see all of this, and, you know, and you start to get kind of drawn into that, oh, there's poor people, oh, that's just terrible. Is that what the Bible teaches? Be careful. Be careful that you don't let the world sway you over to its side. We have to stand by the scriptures. All right? So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.